Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. <coughs> Jordan Peele and Keegan-Michael Key are two straight-laced yuppies who must infiltrate a gang to get back their beloved cat in the new comedy, Keanu. In fact, just about everyone who comes into contact with this cat seems to fall immediately in love with it and is willing to do anything, including murder, to possess him. So, yeah, the sheer power of this cat's cuteness is on the level of, say, uh, the One Ring from Lord of the Rings. So, I'm gonna show you this cat. Prepare yourself. Oh, gosh, will you look at that guy? My precious indeed. Key and Peel, who have a successful sketch show on Comedy Central with that same name, do great work here as two guys who get way in over their heads over the course of a wild weekend in Los Angeles. The movie is full of great character-based humor and fish-out-of-water comedy and has a resolution so satisfying it's worth overlooking the disjointed and lurching storytelling that the movie has to use to arrive at its conclusion. This is definitely a check-your-brain-at-the-door experience. If you can toss out some of the more basic requirements of character consistency and story pacing, especially given that the writers, actors, and director all made their names in sketch comedy, then you will find it easy to get in on the goofy fun. It's a hit-and-miss affair, but the hits do outweigh the misses, and I recommend the movie based on the charm of its cast, its characters, and especially its title character who, uh, Oh, I just want to show you one more time. Oh, cuteness overload! That's it for the capsule review. Let's get in depth. At the beginning of Keanu, we meet Rel, played by Jordan Peele, who is heartbroken after being dumped and finds a new lease on life when this adorable little guy shows up on his doorstep. However, when drug dealing thugs break into his house by mistake, they meant to break into the house of the drug dealer who lives next door, played by Will Forte, who's having a lot of fun here. Oh, sup, sup, bro. Has anyone shady come by here? I mean, the 17th Street Blips. The 17th Street Blips, okay, where are they? 17th Street. The thugs fall in love with the kitten Keanu as well and take him for their own. Now, Rel, enlisting the help of his cousin, middle-class family man Clarence, played by Keegan-Michael Key, must infiltrate a group of drug-slinging thugs to steal the kitten back while being hunted by the even more dangerous hitmen who murdered Keanu's previous owner. Why are those hitmen looking for Keanu? Um, I don't exactly know. Maybe because they too want to kidnap him? Uh, oh, kidnap? Catnap? No, catnap means something else. Look, it's not exactly clear. In fact, that's one of the quibbles I had with this film, is that the movie's internal logic doesn't always make sense. Characters make logical leaps that don't exactly track, and the plot takes a series of left turns that just don't flow properly. Usually though, those abrupt turns of the plot result in spinning the movie off into actually a more interesting direction, so it's easy to forgive. It really does call attention to the cast and crew's sketch comedy pedigree. Each new situation works in that it's entertaining and full of comedic potential. It's the plot lines that connect these situations into a larger story that don't really seem to fit together. That's really what separates Keanu from the best examples of this genre like Pineapple Express. To get the most enjoyment out of the movie is to selectively ignore the thread of the plot and the character arcs and just live in the moment. Sure, it doesn't quite make sense that we got from there to here, but there was funny and here is funny. So let's just go with it, all right? All of the usual uneven story indicators of unpolished or improv material are present here. Some scenes go on too long, like a scene in which Key explains the appeal of George Michael to a group of gangsters in his minivan. This oh, sh This my sh right here. And the movie goes back to the well with the guys talking street by dropping F-bombs and N-bombs and the register of their own voices just a bit too often. Some jokes are all set up with no payoff like a 
drug trip scene, which goes nowhere, and others, like Key's character using his corporate team building skills, or his character's journey to reclaim his masculinity, which could have used more solid setups because the payoffs are so great. And speaking of great payoffs, the ending of this movie is spot on perfect. All of the threads are tied up quickly and deftly, even some that came out of left field in the 11th hour, and the movie crescendos with a rapid fire series of quick punch lines to send you out into the street chuckling. Again, you'll forget all about the uneven midsection that got you there. The ending of this film will leave you satisfied that even if not every kernel in the bag popped, enough of them exploded right at the end there, right as it's crossing the finish line to leave you with a medium bag's worth of entertainment value. That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter, at Movies That Pop, and click the icon right down there to visit our channel. You'll be able to view all of our other videos, and more importantly, click subscribe so you can stay updated on all the latest releases, and so we can keep doing what we do. Be sure to leave your comments below and click the thumbs up if you like what you heard. Thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel and... Oh my god, that kitty is so cute! Ah!